Recently, a junior developer asked for a code review, and I found this example very interesting. So I'd like to share the review and the refactoring session here with you. First, let me show you the app. It's a table that renders a list of items. There are a few features that make the code more complex. First, we can select and unselect each item. Second, there are some items that are disabled, so we can select them. Third, at the top we have a checkbox that reflects the state of all the checked items. Finally, the top checkbox has a change listener as well and can select or unselect all items. Now let's have a look at the code. At the top we see a few state variables. Then, when we scroll down a bit, we can see a few arrow functions. The first handles the toggling of each checkbox. The second one is responsible for setting the indeterminate state of the top checkbox. And the third is the change handler for the top checkbox. Then we have our JSX, which renders a table with a table head and a table body. Inside the table body, we iterate over the issues array and render one row per issue. The issues data looks like this. We have a simple JSON file that contains an array of objects. Just to be clear, this code isn't bad. It works and it does its job. And in fact, it's quite readable, especially on a high level. So it's similar to what a lot of junior developers would produce. But at the same time, there are a few problems and these problems are very common among junior developers. So let's talk about them one by one. First, the author of this code didn't select the best data structure. We have an array here that has the same length as the issues array and is filled with a boolean checked and a background color. There are a few issues here. On one hand, this kind of array can be hard to edit. So we always have to use an index to access the right object and then we have to clone the complete array. Then there might be performance issues if the data array is very long. And finally, we might run into problems when we change the order of the issues. We then have to order the checked state the same way we order the issues. As an alternative data structure, we can use a map. We could use a simple object where the issue ID is mapped to the checked state. We would only keep the checked IDs in the state as it's easier to calculate the size of it. Or we can use the native JavaScript map as we will do in a bit. The second problem is that we have two unnecessary state variables. The first one is select deselect all is checked. This one can be derived from the checked state and the issues data. The second one is num checkboxes selected. This one can be derived from the checked state variable directly. Finally, the checked state contains a background color for each item. We don't have to keep it there, we can directly set it in the JSX based on the checked state. The third problem is that we directly access the DOM. This isn't really a problem here, but it's quite unusual in React. The React way of accessing a DOM element is by using a ref. Note that we still need to set the top checkbox's indeterminate state directly via the DOM element. The reason is that a checkbox doesn't have an indeterminate prop. So let's start the refactoring. First, we will replace the array with a map. Now we search for the variable name to see where we use it. So the first use is in the handle on change function. The current code maps over the checked state array and replaces the item at the given position. The new item will have a toggle checked state and a different background color. Then it updates the checked state. Since we use a map now, we simply clone our checked state map first. Then we need to toggle the checked state of the given item. To do so, we first see if the item is already in the checked state. We can't do that with the index anymore, so we need to use the ID of the item. If the ID is in the checked state already, we simply delete it, otherwise we add it. Then we update the state. Since we typically only have a handful of selected items, this code is much more performant. We don't have to clone and iterate over the whole array, but only a small map. Then we have the total selected variable, which is simply the number of checked items. This code is quite cumbersome. It uses a map and then reduce. It would be much easier to simply filter and then get the length of the filtered array. But since we use a map now, we can just throw it away and get the size of the updated checked state. Next, we update the checked state in the handle select deselect all handler. The current code is again a bit complex and there's for sure room for improvement. But since we don't use an array anymore, we have to change this completely. If the top checkbox is checked, we want to select all items in the table, otherwise we want to unselect them. Let's start by selecting all items. The complexity here is that we don't want to select all items, but only the ones that are enabled. So first, we need to find all issues with the status open. These are the issues that are enabled in the table. Then we create a new map from this array. 
The map constructor can take an array of key value pairs. Each key value pair is again an array where the first item is the key and the second item is the value. This is it already. Now we can update this checked state, but we also need to update the norm checkboxes selected state. Now let's handle unselecting all items. This is much easier. We simply create an empty map and set the number of checkboxes selected to zero. Now we can remove almost all of the existing code. We only keep the last line. This toggles the check state of the top checkbox. Finally, there are a few small adjustments required in the JSX. Since we don't use an array anymore, we now need to access the check state by ID. So we need to get the ID from the issues and use it to access the check state. To set the check prop on the input, we need to use a double negation. The reason is that the check state only contains the checked values and not the unselected. Then we need to update the parameter in the handle on change callback. We don't use an index anymore, but the ID. We can also use the ID as the key of the table row element. And finally, there seems to be another handle on change callback. Let's give it a try and it breaks. So something is wrong. The problem seems to be the style prop of the table row. This is a bit tricky. Remember previously the check state contained the background color. So the previous code simply assigned the background color by accessing the check state for a given item. We can do that anymore now. Instead, we can use a ternary to set the background to gray when the item is selected and white otherwise. There still seems to be a problem. If we click one of the items, all of them are selected. This shouldn't happen. So let's debug the problem quickly. I used the VS Code debugger here and can simply add a breakpoint to the handle on change handler. Let's click a checkbox. And we can see that the ID is undefined. So let's have a look at the data and we see that the ID is missing there. I prepared a data set already, so let's copy paste it here. And now it works. As a last step, I'm not really happy with the variable naming. So let's rename the checked state to something like check by ID. This makes it clear that we use a map. Now let's create a commit and continue with the next step of the refactoring session. The second problem that we discussed are the unnecessary state variables. We have the select, deselect all is checked and the num checkbox is selected states. We can derive these from the check by ID state and the issues array. Let's start with num checkboxes selected. This is pretty easy. We simply get the size of the check by ID state. The select deselect all is checked state is a bit more difficult. It's responsible for the checked state of the top checkbox. This checkbox is checked when all enabled items in the table are selected. Note only the enabled, not the disabled ones. So we can simply use the check by ID state. First, we need to get all open issues. And then we use the length of this array. Now we can remove the state and all of its setters. We also have to adjust the check state of the top checkbox. We simply compare the number of open issues to the number of checked items. And finally, I would like to rename the variable again to something like num checked issues. Okay, we got rid of a few lines of code and we don't need to keep the state variables in sync anymore. Let's create another commit. The third problem that we talked about in the code review was accessing the DOM elements directly by document get element by ID. Instead, we can use a ref. Let's define the ref at the top of the component with the use ref hook. Then we assign this to the top checkbox. Now we can remove the document get element by ID and replace indeterminate checkbox with our ref. Note that we need to write top checkbox dot current to access the current value of the ref. Now I see a few more opportunities to simplify this code. First, there's the count variable. The naming isn't very clear. Count is simply the number of open issues. And we have this variable already defined at the top of the component, so we can simply reuse it here. Also, the calculation of the count variable is very cumbersome. A better implementation for this would to simply filter for open issues and then get the length of the filtered array. But as I said, we don't need it here. Let's check the app and it still works.
There's a last opportunity to improve this code. You can see that the handle indeterminate checkbox contains three if statements. We could replace this with if else statements, but actually it's much simpler. We can do that in a single line. We simply copy the second condition. If this condition is true, then indeterminate is true. If not, it's false. So this is much simpler. Now we can remove the handle indeterminate checkbox handler. Test the app and it seems to work. So let's create a commit and do a final round of cleanup. The remaining two functions look okay, so we can keep them. Let's have a look at the JSX. In the top checkbox, we can remove the brackets around the type checkbox prop. And we also don't need the ID anymore as we don't access the DOM element by ID. We also don't need the name and the value. Next, I'd like to remove the onClick handler of the table row here. This is a slight change in the behavior, obviously, but I don't think it makes sense to have two onClick handlers. Then we can inline the styles tr variable. Next, we clean up the checkbox again. And actually, we don't need the second input here. We can simply set the disabled prop on one input. Again, I'm not too happy with the variable naming. A convention for Booleans is to start with is. So let's rename this to is issue open. And finally, we have another ternary at the bottom here. We can simply inline this again. Now we can see that the index is not required anymore. That's very nice. Look at this. We only have around 100 lines of code left from initially almost 180. The code is a lot cleaner and easier to read from my perspective. The last thing we might need to do if we use more data is to optimize for performance. This is not required for this example, but let me show you anyway. Potentially, the filtering of the open issues might lead to performance issues in the future if we have very long data arrays. In that case, we can simply wrap or use memo hook around it and we should be safe. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. I'm also thinking about doing more refactoring sessions like this, so any feedback would be appreciated. Also, feel free to ask for a code review yourself.